Thank you for joining Jennifer Schaus and Associates in our 2019 webinar Wednesday series. We are coming to you live from downtown Washington, D.C. Our webinars are every Wednesday, and you can find the upcoming schedule on our website. Past webinars and all recordings are also on our website and on our YouTube channel, along with over 160 other recordings on federal contracting topics. All are complimentary. If you have questions for our speaker today, you can email her directly with the contact information you'll see on the last slide. All right, this is just a little bit about us. We are a Washington, D.C.-based firm and provide services for federal contractors. This ranges from market analysis reports to proposal writing and also post award compliance. More information is on our website, so please visit us there. We do offer advertising, so you can email me if you want more information on that. Um, and our webinar today is sponsored by AccuTrack. Here's a short message from them. AccuTrack Consulting and Accounting Services is an 8A WOSB CPA firm committed to supporting entities sustain growth in government contracting. Our outstanding DCAA accounting solutions reduce audit risk, improve cash flows, and give you peace of mind. Contact us today to learn how we can enhance your DCAA accounting efforts. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Our speaker today is Judy Bratt, and she's going to be covering how to win your meeting with your federal buyer and get invited back. Uh, Judy, thank you for joining us, and I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Thank you so much. It is great to be here. So who wants to win more? I'll bet you all do. Next slide. The win of the work starts with winning the meeting. And so we're going to be talking about the types of wins that you need all the way to the signing of the contract itself. Two types of wins you need to create with your buyer, three checklists to help get you there, and the four master keys that unlock federal win. And I've got a bonus for you because free stuff, it's fun. Next slide. So get out your notebook. We're going to do some work here today. All right, next slide. What kind of wins do you need to create with your buyer? Next slide. Well, there's two types of wins right out of the box. The second most important is to win their attention. That's what it means you've got to do in order to get the meeting in the first place. The first kind of attention that you need is to win more engagement, to get invited back. I'll bet that you are not the only person that's gotten a first meeting with somebody, but then never got through the door again. Does that happen to you? Honestly, it happens to me sometimes, and it's really crushing. We put it all out there, you get the meeting, you've done everything that you think you're supposed to do, and then cricket. Ugh. So figure out first how to get on the calendar, and then look at what it takes to get invited back. Next slide. Here's some steps. Step number one, identify the specific requirement that you are focused on and the stage that that acquisition is at, all right? Because the kind of contact you have and the kind of conversation you have is really going to vary depending on what's going on already. For example, have you just seen something in a published forecast? That's not bad. That sure as heck beats 14 days to go in Fed biz off. Next slide. Have you found this opportunity in a pre-solicitation notice? Pre-solicitation can mean a source of thought, which is a type of market research question that the buying office may be putting on the street. And so they're really trying to find out, are there any small businesses in particular that can do this? Who's capable of doing this work? That is a little downstream from a request for information. A request for information is a really early stage pre-solicitation, which kind of says, the government's kind of thinking of maybe doing a thing. How could we do it? Kind of give away all your secrets and help us shape the requirements. And we might not have any money. That's okay. And it could take you as much in effort to respond to a pre-solicitation notice as it does to respond to a draft RFP. These are still really important uh, opportunities to consider building a relationship, all right? So uh, next up, next slide. 
are you at the stage where somebody's just thinking about maybe they're going to do something? And so you're just anticipating a, uh, for example, a recompetition. You're already in the account. You know that the project is going to go on, but nothing else has been published yet. Or there's, you know, or better yet, next slide. There's a whisper in your ear. You heard it on the street. You overheard a conversation in the elevator or in the chow line. Um, being able to identify what kinds of things somebody might be talking about and what kind of information they might want and when is really important. There's a different kind of information that they'll want at each of these kinds of stages, whether it's requirement definition or draft RFP or when they're getting down to the final short list of oral presentations. If you're not sure what kind of information to share or when, get in touch with me. We've got another handout about that. So, next slide. Next, invite the right people for the right stage of acquisition. When something's at a really early stage or there's not a requirement on the street at all or something isn't even in the forecast, a small business specialist could be a great person to get the ear of to talk not just about here's my capabilities, but to say, I see a requirement like this coming in from the horizon. Do you think that maybe uh, it would make sense to talk about setting this aside for a business like mine? Okay. Uh, contracting officer has times when they can and times when they really can't talk to you. We covered that in my other webinar. And so it, if it's sufficiently early, before the formal competition has begun, a contracting officer might be a great person to invite to a meeting. And users and program managers may, can have a lot of flexibility unless they're involved in being part of the acquisition team. So you need to know your people in advance and find out what, what roles they play in source selection. Primes and partners can not only be helpful to invite to a meeting, but they can also help encourage the other people in the account to attend. Stakeholder might or might not be the right person, but be aware of who all the players are and then invite the right person to the right thing. Next slide. You've got to win their attention by being able to say what's in it for them, what's in it for them right now. Remember that the kinds of things you talk about that could be interesting to them might be different from, hi, here's my capability presentation. Oh, please. Be smart, be generous, be courageous. Remember that FAR 15.201 says that contracting officials are encouraged to talk to industry to discuss innovation. Can you talk about not just innovation and what's real cool about your own stuff, which is great, but where's the leading edge of solutions in your industry, for example? What are the leading trends? What are good ways to be more productive, to save money? What kinds of things can result in greater reliability, greater capacity? What kinds of solutions could be implemented more successfully and more quickly? What kinds of solutions could be adopted faster right through the agency or the office of the program? Maybe what they really honestly need is to have you show up just to show that they shopped. Sometimes they need, they, they have somebody else in mind. Ever see the solicitation where they have somebody else in mind? Sure they do. And so it may be that, especially in fourth quarter, and when you don't have the customer intimacy that you would like to have, oh, maybe next year, maybe the thing they most want is for you to show up so they can say that they talk to you. Fine, but be aware of that. Explain that you know that that might be what they need most right now and let them know how much you'd like to get a meeting on the calendar for October for next time. So understand where they're at and what they most need right now. Next slide. As well, think about could you solve a small problem that can give them a fast result right in the room? A, give them the ooh and ah factor. What could you do to do a, or a quick demonstration or, a, or show them a small case study, but come up with a really practical idea or situation that you could work through that would be directly relevant to the situation and problems and challenges in that agency? 
especially, especially valuable if you have professional services. And I do a lot of work with companies with professional services. It can be more challenging, but could be more fun if you have some kinds of products um, where you can do a, a demonstration. I had a guy, our house just, we just got new windows in our house. The guy's from Thompson Creek, and they're not paying me to tell you this, but um, the guy from Thompson Creek came with a whole case of samples. He did a demonstration about how the, the, the double pane windows were filled with argon and what that meant for being a barrier. And he also showed, he brought this heating, a, a mock-up window, and he had this big sort of heat generator, and he put it on one side of the double pane window, and he said, here, put your hand on the other side. And sure enough, you couldn't feel any heat at all. I'm going, wow, this is really cool. So if you have product, that can be easy to do. But even if you have a service, you can still give somebody the wow factor. Did we buy from Thompson Creek? We actually did. And he, because, in part because he was thorough, he demonstrated, he offered uh, an opportunity to save if I were able to make a commitment right then. And he was also very respectful and not pushy all at the same time. He respected my what my needs and my time commitment and gave me a chance to make a decision right away. How cool is that? Next slide. Finally, you need to get on their calendar. Make sure you ask with lots of lead time. Gee, it's time, it's, it's now um, almost middle of August, great. Um, you're hoping to get something on the calendar in the next two weeks? Uh, maybe, but maybe not. By the time you get to mid-September, they're gonna be busy doing closeouts and moving money around. I'm not saying all is lost, but you really want to give folks a lot of lead time when you're trying to get in their calendars. Pick the right time of year for the right topic. If you think that you've waited till fourth quarter and you really want to win a couple of million dollar projects and they don't know you and they've never heard of you, um, you might want to have a different objective for your meeting. On the other hand, having a small offer, something that they could try, or something that you know they're working on at this time of year, great. Multiple touch points can reach your key players. This is where having partners, um, oh, either it's a prime or somebody else who's offering a complimentary product or service and is already in the agency and can also reach out to your points of contact in the agency and say, hey, these folks are really great. I love working with them. I want to encourage you to come. Um, they've offered me a seat. Will you come? Have internal and external proponents or really almost broadly speaking, sponsors, and ask your agency contact, hey, who else should we invite? Here's our list. When they say yes, build anticipation, send a confirmation, send a little bit of advanced information, talk to your agency contacts about your internal outreach strategy to maximize attendance. Next slide. Oh, we got the meeting, now what, oh geez. I know I have that feeling all the time. There are two parts, one part of my life where I and not random. I may seem like an organized person, but really, sometimes you've got a lot on the line. You do not want to miss a trick. Next slide. The part of my life where I absolutely use a checklist is when I fly an airplane. I'm a pilot. A checklist lets me fly with confidence. Did you know that pilots have multiple checklists? There's a pre-flight checklist, all the things that you check out even before you get off the ground. There's a run-up checklist. So I know that when I get to the nice happy stripe in the middle of the runway and I put the throttles on the wall. I know I've already done everything. I'm not going, oh, did I forget that? No, I already know. I'm set. I'm confident. There's a takeoff checklist. You know how fast you're going and when it's really time to pull back the yoke and commit lift. You have a couple of in-flight checklists so you can reset everything for cruise. You've got a landing checklist. You've got a shutdown checklist. Oh, yeah. And then there's a checklist with a big red stripe and not very many things on it for in case of, uh-oh. So you need to have those kinds of checklists because then you don't miss things. You can proceed with confidence. You're not panicked. You've maximized the amount of space in your brain for what happens if. Next slide. That's what you want to do as well when you are preparing for your meeting. You want a pre-meeting checklist. You want a call day checklist. You want a follow-up checklist. Just in the same way as you should never cruise the internet looking for proposal templates because there's not going to be one that's going to be just perfect for you, remember that your, tech, your checklists for your meetings are going to be unique. So I'm going to give you some ideas to start with, but remember, rely on, get the benefit from what your own experience has 
taught you. Next slide. Looking for ideas? Next slide. All right. Here's a start in this for free meeting checklist. Location and facility. You're clearing this with your contact inside the agency or you're finding out whether or not the location that you have in mind, if you're going to have people off site, is going to work for your folks. Is it close enough? Can they get there? Remember, if it's in the Washington, D.C. area, which they're not always, allow for lots of traffic. Allow for, allow for parking. See if you can prepay their parking or something like that if they're not going to be, if the presentation is not going to be in the agency itself. If it is going to be in the agency itself, you want to check out the security procedures, make sure that everybody that is going to be attending has the appropriate clearances. Find out what kind of equipment and media you can bring on site. Some folks don't let you bring your portable devices. Some folks don't let you bring or want you to be handing out uh, thumb drives. Some folks have limitations on what kind of equipment you can bring in. Find all that stuff out from your key point of contact inside the agency. Develop the, the agenda cooperatively with your sponsors. Don't just say, thanks for the meeting. Okay, here's what we're going to talk about. You want to get their buy-in all along. Find out what kinds of handouts, if any, might be appropriate. Maybe something that's designed to let them take notes on. So they're really, again, actively involved, physically taking notes as you go along. For goodness sake, rehearse. This is really something I have a hard time with. I actually sat down and rehearsed this webinar because I wanted to make sure it got done in exactly the amount of time necessary. And this was set for a pure broadcast webinar. There's something that's completely different about doing it in person. I'm going to share that with you in a second. That's absolutely essential that you need to know. For goodness sake, make sure there's at least two of you, somebody that's taking notes as well as the person that's speaking. Humans are what back in the telecom age we used to call, uh, um, it's not duplex, it's really single. You can only transmit or receive it once. You can't talk and listen at the same time. All right? So make sure you've got a note taken. Have specific goals for a meeting and have some backup plans in case something goes wrong. All right? Those are some starting points for a pre-meeting checklist. Next slide. Meeting day checklist. Final checks, how you're going to get there, check out all, all of your technology, your projectors, your computers, have backup equipment, and check in with your point of contact. Make sure they know that your list is clear who's coming from your side. If you're, especially if you are in a remote location, something offsite, you've traveled somewhere, you might want to go in two separate cars. Arrive in plenty of time to clear security, lots and lots of time. If you're in the Washington, D.C. area, this is not news. There's going to be traffic. Be ready for that. There's nothing wrong with arriving a full half an hour ahead of time. That sure beats getting it done at the last minute, which is not going to go well for anybody. And it doesn't improve somebody's impression of you as a reliable human. Reliability trust is built one small interaction at a time and showing up in advance is a very easy way to boost trust and confidence at every point in the relationship, not just when the relationship is new. For goodness sake, pass around a sign-in sheet. How many times you've been in been to one of these presentations where people think, I don't have a business card. Really, again, you should not be surprised by this. Furthermore, expect that some of the people who are in the room might be competitors, competitors, prime contractors, people who are dual badged. You need to know who they are. Get the sign-in before you start. Then use your 600-second presentation. Remember to allow about 60% of your time for questions and discussion. And, you know, however it is that you do it, whatever your personal routines are, relax. Remember, you're not pitching to a machine. You're not selling to a government. You're building relationships with real human beings. No matter what time of year, and is especially in the fourth quarter, they're under so much stress. You're incredibly lucky to have them in the room at all. Be grateful and have a little empathy. I really struggle with empathy. I find it really hard to do the put yourself in somebody else's shoes. The time that you spend, even if you spend half an hour, 20 minutes, thinking, who is this person? What's going on with them right now? What's happening with them and their work? What Do you know them well enough to know what's happening with them and their family? Are they just going on vacation? Are they just coming back from vacation? Are they up for a promotion? Get a sense of what's on the line for them. Connect with them as real human beings. 
take your time, really watch facial expressions, but really care about who they are and what's up with them. Next slide. Wait a second, what was that 600 seconds? You said to slash our presentation to 600 seconds? Actually, no. I want you to hack your presentation to 600 seconds. I want you to, I challenge you to prepare six simple slides that you can present in 600 seconds. That's 10 minutes. The most common length of time you might get for a meeting is 30 minutes. If you talk for 29 minutes, what have you learned? Nothing. You want to be able to, in the same way as I prepared to move through my content very quickly for you, you want to be able to just go through the highlights, have questions to ask, inspire things, really start to have an exchange, a dialogue, get people really actively engaged in the time that you are in the room. I'm going to give you something to make that easier. I've got a handout that's a six slide template but I'm gonna offer you the link to you at the end of this presentation because I want you to be successful. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that to you. Next slide. Follow-up checklist. Starting point, write thank you notes. Actual handwritten thank you notes, how about that? If you, want, if you just can't bear to do it or can't find a stamp, then send email. That's one of the reasons why you got their contact information on the sign-in list, right? Make sure that on, in the email you send a meeting summary and go over the next steps that everybody said they were going to take, which of course you did at the end of the meeting as well. You've got maximum 48 hours to get the follow-up collateral you promised them. Get a debriefing within your team. Get a debriefing from your point of contact in the agency. Find out what could be better, what worked well. Confirm any nuances that you missed. And for goodness sake, do all the things you said you were going to do. Next slide. So really quickly, top tips to get invited back. Have a sign-in sheet, know who's there. Have columns that say first name, last name, email address, phone number, title if you can. Keep your story concise. There's a whole thing about how to tell your story in about six minutes. I'd love to tell you more about that. It's a really special art form, but there is a way to go and start with a hook, tell your story with power, and then get people really interested in what's in it for them. Next, make your presentation about them. Reference things going on in their agency. Have smart questions that show that you've researched what's happening in their agency, what they're doing with other vendors, what programs or projects that they are working on, what kinds of experiences they're having with the products or services or programs that they're working with right now. First validate, then educate. Imagine being in a federal agency and knowing that you don't have all the money that you'd like to have, you don't have all the time that you'd like to have. You know that you don't have big corporate budgets, so you're probably not, the way you're doing things, you know it could be better. Show up already aware of how it is that they're doing things validate them, say, wow, you are doing the most amazing job with DOS 3.0. I have, can, have not never seen an agency run an entire contact management system on that. You are really keeping it alive. That's impressive. Hey, here's some ideas for some ways that organizations of your size and scope with similar folks you're trying to reach have made a transition that's been feasible and workable to come up to speed and do even better, that kind of thing. So first validate, then educate. People have got to feel safe so they'll start to talk to you about the journey you want to take them on. For goodness sake, bring quantifiable case studies with you from similar clients. Not only an organization that has a similar mission, but has a similar size and scale and scope of operation. There's nothing that knocks down objections faster and increases your credibility more solidly than showing you've already done it. It ain't bragging if you've already done it. Show them a fast result, give them a demonstration, ask for a sample problem, solve it right before their eyes. You do this all the time. You're really good at what you do. Take it out for a run, show your stuff. Write your thank you notes, do your follow-up. Next slide. There are four master keys that open federal contract wins. And here they are. First, 
define and identify the specific buyer, specific humans who need what you do, who buy what you do. Get to know everything about them and prepare for what they might be thinking, what problems they might have when you show up in front of them. Have smart questions that show that you've researched their current situation and all the public information they have published in so many different places about their agency and what's going on. In my other presentation, we've got six different sources that you can use. Find out everything you can. Be like a detective when you show up and when you're trying to define each specific buyer. You should have a profile that you're writing up, that you're creating. In addition to any databases you may be using, there's intelligence only you have about the specific humans that you want in the room. Second, know what to do, what to say, what to ask, when to do it. That's gonna be different for each federal human, each person in a specific job, and each different stage of the acquisition process. Third, you need to systematize the process with the actions that you're taking so that you're doing more of the right things at the right time and having predictable success. Great, you won once. Did you know what you did right? Systematize your process so you're not trying to make things up all the time. And finally, have a plan and system set up, workflow defined so you can take rapid, consistent action to build engagement. These are the most important things I work on with my clients. The clients that, are, that do the work are successful. Next slide. Back to the thing I promised you. Wondering how can I build the perfect presentation? What can I say in 600 seconds? I have a complimentary handout for you. Six simple slides. The perfect federal capability presentation template. It's waiting for you at growfedbiz.com slash capability dash presentation dash template. That's growfedbiz.com slash capability dash presentation dash template. I want you to be successful. My book, Government Contract Made Easier, is called Easier Because Easy is Fiction. Easier we can do. That's what we're all about here at Summit Insight. I would love to chat with you. Let's make that happen. Next slide, please. Give me a call at 703-627-1074. I would love to chat with you. We can book some time. Nothing would make me happier. I'm delighted to have had the chance to spend this time with you. So remember, get in front of your buyers, win their attention by getting in their meeting, do the right things to engage and get invited back and use the template. Grab the handout, give me a call, let me know how I can help you. Back to you. Thank you so much, Judy, for sharing your knowledge and insight today. Uh, today's presentation has been recorded and can be found on YouTube or on our website within about 48 hours. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and this concludes the webinar.